All right, welcome to Lecture 7 on hybridization of our bonding unit. The questions that we're going to address in this uh, lecture are what are uh, hybrid atomic orbitals and what are pi and sigma bonds. The idea is looking at hybridization and how it affects chemical bonding. All right, so first of all, we're going to go into a little bit more specific details about forming a covalent bond between two atoms. Um, so I have a statement here written down here. You might want to put it in your notes, and we're going to draw some diagrams to kind of represent this statement. Um, covalent bonds are formed when atomic orbitals overlap. So overlap and share a pair of electrons. And so it's the overlapping of orbitals is what we're going to focus on here. So let's say that we have two um, s orbitals. All right. So s orbitals, you remember, are spherical in nature. And if an s orbital contains an electron in it, actually, let me erase that, an electron in it, and we get another overlap of another s orbital with an electron in it then these two overlapping orbitals form a covalent bond so we can say this is a 1s and maybe this is a 1s orbital that are overlapping now we can also represent this using a kind of orbital diagram where we can show that we have a 1s orbital and another 1s orbital with an electron and these two s 1s orbitals are going to overlap to form a covalent bond this is called a covalent bond representing by the overlapping of these two orbitals. Alright, now this overlapping of these two s orbitals is very typical um, in a covalent bond. We can overlap other orbitals too. Let's say we want to overlap an s orbital with a p orbital. Okay, so I'm erasing all of this. I'll show you, remember, our s orbital has an electron in it, and then a p orbital has a two lobes, like so, and there's our overlapping of a, say, a 1s and, say, a 2p orbital, forming a covalent bond right here. And there's our overlapping of orbitals. Alright. Um, we can picture this by also using a diagram. Let me erase this and kind of show you a potential orbital diagram showing an overlap of an S and a P orbital. So here's our 1S with our electron in it. And then we have from a different atom a 2p orbital with an electron and these are going to overlap and it's going to form our covalent bond and so this kind of overlapping notation that you see here dri drawn is what we're going to help to represent um, uh, orbitals that are forming covalent bonds and when we get into this hybridization and hybrid orbitals that we're going to talk to about in this lecture. All right. So let's move on to what are hybrid atomic orbitals. Uh, simply, when we mix um, orbitals together, we can form brand new orbitals that are called hybrid orbitals. So let's pretend that we take an s orbital and we take a p orbital 
and when we mix an s and a p orbital together we create a brand new type of orbital called a hybrid orbital and that's all a hybrid orbital it is is just mixing of of different orbitals together the process of mixing orbitals is called the hybridization process and from our statement here in question two um, hybridization is the process which atomic orbitals within an atom mix to produce hybrid orbitals of intermediate energy and that's kind of important intermediate energy the atom is able to form stronger covalent bonds using these hybrid orbitals All right. so we're going to show you several examples of mixing orbitals together to create um, brand new hybrid orbitals and how those hybrid orbitals um, apply to chemical bonding so the first hybrid orbitals are known as sp3 hybrid orbitals okay so we're going to use carbon atom or a carbon atom to give you an example of sp3 hybridization but the general idea is we're going to take four atomic orbitals and we're going to combine those four atomic orbitals together to make an sp3 to do that we take an s orbital and we take three p orbitals we take and combine all four of these and we create an sp3 hybrid orbital which looks like this in our diagram it looks a little different because it's a combination of all four of these atomic orbitals an s and the three p's and so since we use an s orbital we'll call it s and we use three p orbitals we'll call these sp3 hybrid orbitals All right. now for carbon as we said we're going to use carbon as our example here to show you how this looks like um, a carbon atom if we look at an orbital diagram has a 1s orbital with two electrons in there and then has a 2s and then in the p's so two p's one electron and another electron in the p orbital and carbon is going to have an empty p orbital as indicated here and so if we form sp3 hybrid orbitals what's going to occur is is our 2s and our 2p atomic orbitals are going to mix together combine to form four um, sp3 atomic orbitals so if we combined four orbitals then we get four hybrid orbitals out and this is typical so say like we combine two orbitals together then we get two hybrid orbitals if we combine three orbitals then we would get three hybrid orbitals out of that combination so here again we get four hybrid orbitals because we're combining four orbitals together and since all three or sorry all four of the sp3 hybrid orbitals are going to be equal in energy we will have an electron in each one of those hybrid orbitals just like so all right now how can we use hybrid orbitals to relate to chemical bonding we're going to use again our carbon as an example of hybrid orbitals in chemical bonding by using the molecule methane remember methane is CH4 if I was to draw a Lewis dot structure of methane we would have a tetrahedral structure with four electron domains around that central atom of carbon All right. so what's going to occur here is we're going to take carbons four sp3 hybrid orbitals 
and those four hybrid orbitals are going to overlap. Remember we talked about early in this lecture that orbitals in order to create a covalent bond or overlap. So we're going to take the four sp3 hybrid orbitals and overlap them with one with a 1s um, orbital for these hydrogens here you see here and you can see the overlapping of these orbitals to create our four covalent bonds alright so here's another way of looking at it using an orbital diagram so if I have remember we're gonna make methane so CH4 here CH4, there we go, our loose structure. So what we're going to have is we're going to have our 1, 2, 3, 4 hybrid orbitals. These are sp3 hybrid orbitals. And each one, remember, has an electron with a parallel spin following Hund's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle. And then these are all from the carbon atom, right? These are all sp3 from carbon atoms, right? And so you can think of the carbon atom, atom having an sp3 hybrid orbital, an sp3 hybrid orbital, sp3, and an sp3. So th these are all sp threes, each one of these. Right? And so then what's going to happen is, is when we take our hydrogens, which have a 1s orbital, and so we can see here that 1s orbital is going to overlap. Uh, make this a little bit bigger here. Overlap here. And it's going to share electrons. And this is the 1s and this one here is our sp3 hybrid orbital from the carbon All right so what we can look at here then is we have a 1s hybrid orbital or not a, just a 1s regular orbital and it's going to form an overlap here and that's going to form one of our bonds we have another 1s from the other hydrogen and it's going to form an overlap see how this works it just overlaps and then the same thing for these last two you have a 1s and you're going to create an overlap and another 1s from the last hydrogen and an overlap like so alright so Let's clean this up a little bit here. Erase all of this. A lot of writing here. Erase this board. All right, so now let's take a look and kind of enlarge this. So we have our carbon. And it's going to have an sp3, sp3, sp3 hybrid orbital. So these are all sp3s from carbon. You're going to get the overlap from the 1s, an overlap from the 1s, another overlap from the 1s, and another overlap for a 1s. So this is our hydrogen, 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 and hydrogen. All right, so what we can consider these um, covalent bonds are sp3 1s bonds, or an, this one sp3 and a 1s bond, and sp3 and a 1s bond, and an sp3 and a 1s bond. All right. So I'm hoping you kind of see the picture behind 
how we take and make these hybrid orbitals by combining atomic orbitals and then those hybrid orbitals will overlap with other orbitals of other atoms to create the chemical bonds that we call covalent bonds. All right. All right, so now let's go to our next type of hybrid orbitals, sp2 hybrid orbitals. These are slightly more complex because in the end with in the end here, sometimes we create a lot of um possibilities of double bonds here and that creates a kind of a uh, complexity and we'll address that here as well so an sp2 hybrid orbital you might guess on this is that we're going to take um, an s orbital and we're going to take two p orbitals now so only three orbitals and we're going to combine all three orbitals together to make our sp2 hybrid orbital that you see here in this diagram all right and how many hybrid or sp2 hybrid orbitals do you think we'll make if you guess three you would be correct all right so let's use carbon as an example again and kind of show how this will work uh, remember carbon has a 2s and has those 2p orbitals one electron and two of the p orbitals and then one empty still okay so if it goes through sp2 hybridization we're going to combine the s and only two p orbitals together so we're going to form three oops let me erase this ah sp2 hybrid orbitals and we have one 2p orbital remaining so we have an electron electron and an electron and another electron in the 2p all right so now we only have three hybrid orbitals and one um, 2p orbital remaining for carbon remember we're doing carbon here all right so now, with this situation, we can get um, some interesting bonding occurring. So let's show you this. This is the type of bonding or overlap of orbitals that will occur when we have a compound that forms sp3 hybrid orbitals um, with a carbon, double bonded carbon, and then two hydrogens like so and this is called ethane alright ethane here alright and so the hydrogens and the carbon is are going to form sp2 1s bonds and sp2 1s bond and an sp2 and a 1s bond and then the last one here is going to be an sp2, a 1s bond. Of course, the 1s orbitals are from the hydrogen, and the sp2 um, hybrid orbitals are from the carbons. Okay? So, what about the double bond? Well, the double bond is a little bit more complex because what's going to occur with the double bond is it's going to create. Um, in fact, is let's let's erase all of this and just look at the double bond only between the two carbons. Let's see if we can make sense of it. Let me look at only the double bonds. So we got our two carbons that are double bonded together. Okay, and of course we have those other bonds that are coming out for the hydrogens okay so what's happening here is that we are going to create a bond between the two p orbitals between these two carbons all right and we're going to create the second bond out of that double bond is going to be an overlap of an sp2 
and an sp2. So our double bond is composed of the p orbitals overlapping and the sp2 hybrid orbitals overlapping for our two carbon atoms. All right. Um, let's draw it in a different way. See if we can see this a little bit different here. Alright. So, our carbon is going to have a p orbital that's sticking up like that. So we can, let's label this our 2p for this carbon. And it's going to form some hybrid orbitals, sp2, sp2, and our other sp2. Okay, so that's what the carbon looks like. And so there's going to be an electron here. Actually, let's use a different color for representing the electrons. Alright, so we have an electron here. We have an electron here, 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 in here. So, what will occur is when our hydrogens are bonded, they're going to overlap here. This is the 1s orbital from a hydrogen. And another overlap of an s orbital, this is a 1s. So we're going to add another electron and another electron. This is from our other hydrogen. This is the other overlap. Oops, sorry. Ah, I wrote that wrong. Let me re erase that. Right. So we have an electron there. All right. All right. So what's going to actually occur is this is an overlap from a carbon of another sp orbital. This is part of our double bond that's going to occur. And this carbon has a p orbital also coming. That's a 2p. It's coming off there. And then it has their sp2 and sp2. Right? And so we should get a hydrogen 1s orbital overlap, a hydrogen 1s orbital overlap, right? And so then our double bond, I don't know why I put an electron there. We have an electron here. And so we should have an overlap that will occur between these two p orbitals. And so our double bond is right here and right here. This is our double bond. Because a double bond occurs between an overlap of a p orbital and two hybrid orbitals. All right? Kind of complex? Yes it is, but you can you can learn this. And so let's go back to our diagram that we see here and point some things out. So you can see our double bond is our overlapping of our p, p orbitals right here and an overlapping of an sp2 um, and an sp2 orbital. Okay, So this right here is an sp2 overlap of an sp2. This is from one carbon, this is from the other carbon. And then you have the overlaps of the p orbitals. Two p's. So the other part of the bond is from the two p's bonded to a two p from one carbon and the other carbon. Both these together make our double bond between our two carbons. All right. I hope this is trying to make some sense of all of this. 
Alright, now, while we're at this, let's talk about some special bond names or vocabulary called sigma and pi bonds. Alright, sigma and pi. Every single bond, so every single bond between a uh, covalent bond is considered a sigma bond, right? So when we get something like our, back to our molecule here, these are sigma bonds because they are single. These are all sigma bonds. So there are four sigma bonds here, right? And a double bond is made out of a pi bond and a sigma bond. So every double bond, and I would write this down because this is important, is made up of a pi bond and a sigma bond, okay? Now, what is a pi bond? Well, a pi bond is an overlapping of two p orbitals. So anytime you have p orbitals that overlap from two different atoms, they form a pi bond, all right? So that means in a double bond, since a double bond is created by a um, overlapping of hybrid orbitals and an overlapping of p orbitals, the double bond always has one pi and one sigma bond a single bond and a pi bond all right always found in a double bond okay all right let's get to our last hybrid ty type of orbital that we're going to spend a lot of time on and that is sp hybrid orbitals and as you can probably guess we're going to take a 1s orbital and a 1p orbital and we're going to combine them together to form our sp hybrid orbitals. And we can see this with carbon again using our example and carbon um, has our 2s 2p's one electron in each of those 2p's and the s orbitals and one empty p orbital we're going to take the s and we're going to take a p and we're going to make two sp hybrid orbitals one with each electron that leaves us with two p orbitals remaining one with each electron right now because we make or have two p orbitals they those p orbitals can overlap with other p orbitals to create triple bonds so sp hybridization is great for making triple bonds all right we'll show you this with this molecule here we have carbon forming a triple bond between another carbon and so with this triple bond here, you're going to have two overlapping p orbitals creating the triple bond and then an overlapping of an sp orbital with another sp orbital um, helping to create that last um, bond in that triple bond. So we could say we have a 2p bonded to a 2p, another 2p bonded to another 2p and then an sp bonded to an sp and these three here make up our triple bond alright because of those overlapping and so these are pi bonds and this would be a sigma bond so every triple bond contains two pi bonds and one sigma write that down very important so every triple bond contains two pi bonds and one sigma bond right so if we looked at this molecule a little bit closer here 
we have our triple bond and we have one hydrogen and one hydrogen so let's see if we can represent this the hydrogen is represented by a 1s orbital that's going to form a bond between an sp orbital All right, that's going to be that bond this bond is also represented by a 1s and an sp hybrid orbital and that is considered a single bond or a sigma bond and then our double our triple bond is made by an sorry right it's made by a 2p and a 2p overlap and another 2p and another 2p overlap and then an sp and an s P overlap. So this right here is our triple bond. And so we have a pi bond, another pi bond, and a sigma bond. Alright? So that's how that molecule works there. And so make sure you spend some time thinking about this structure as well. All right. All right. Hold on here. All right. So our last bit, and it appears like we're having kind of a problem with our um, PowerPoint. I'm not sure why. But we're going to go ahead and, and continue on. The last is the um, hybrid orbitals are referred to as either S, P, D, or, or S, P, 3, D, or S, P, 3, D, 2. And so you can kind of think of these as you're going to take an S orbital, the three p orbitals and a d orbital and combine them together to make an sp 3d or we're going to take two d orbitals three p orbitals and an s orbital to create the sp 3d2 now the truth of the matter is is that scientists now believe that sp 3d and sp 3d2 orbitals do not really exist however ib is going to still test you on those um, at this point, even though they probably don't exist, the curriculum hasn't caught up with it, and so we're going to go ahead and um, uh, kind of teach you that these orbitals, but we're not going to show you shapes or um, much about them, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is show you a shortcut method to determine the hybridization and the number of pi and sigma bonds an atom or a molecule has. Okay? So let's take a look back at our methane molecule here. Our methane we know is a tetrahedral structure. Alright? Like so. A trick way to determine the hybridization around the carbon, the central atom, is to basically count the number of domains um, around the central atom. All right. So I usually start at the top, the first domain like this, and I'll call this and I'll begin to count. So I'll say this is S. The next one is a P, and then we have another P and another P, so we we'll call that SP3. So all of these are SP3. SP3. Alright? Because again, I go S, P1, P2, P3. Just like that. Alright? So let me try another one and see if you can get... Let's try water. Water has a Lewis dot structure. Water has a Lewis dot structure. Looks like this. And there are four domains. 
around um, oxygen. So the hybridization around oxygen, we also count the lone pairs. So we'll call this S, P1, P2, P3. So that means that the hybridization is SP3 as well for each one of these. So even the lone pair of electrons are in SP3 hybrid orbitals. SP3 hybrid orbitals. Okay? So that's kind of how you do this little trick. I'll try some other ones here. What about ammonia? NH3. Okay, how many high, how many domains do we have? Well, we have four again. So let's count them. We have S, P1, P2, P3. So that means that everything is SP3 again. All right. So we just continue with this. So let's try something besides SP3. See if we can find something different. Um, let's look at something like this one here. All right. This gives us a bent structure. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to count. All right. S, P1, P2. So here we have SP2, SP2, and SP2. Now, looking at this, how many pi bonds exist here? Well, since we have a double bond, we're going to have one pi bond. And every double bond also has one sigma bond. And then we also have a single bond here. So we have another sigma bond from there. So these come from our double bond. So we have a total of two sigma bonds and one pi bond in this molecule. And the hybridization is sp2, hybrid orbitals. Okay, let's look at carbon dioxide for a moment. Carbon dioxide has a Lewis dot structure. Looks like this. Now, how many bonding domains are there? There's two. This is a linear structured molecule. You know that. And so, let's count the hybridization. We have S, P. So, the hybridization here in these orbitals are going to be S, P hybridized orbitals and we have a pi bond and one sigma bond for these double bond and one pi bond and one sigma bond for that double bond okay so a total of two sigmas and two pi's all right kind of seeing how this works we can go on and practice and practice. Let me give you one more. Let's see if you can figure this one out. Okay, so we're going to P, F, 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 and F. Okay, so this is a trigonal bipyramidal. So what would be the hybridization? Let's count. We have S, P1, P2, P3, and then D. All right. So here we actually have our S, P3, D. So all of these bonds form S, P3, D hybrid orbital overlaps. Now, as we talked about, the S, P3, Ds probably do not exist really and there's probably there's other uh, bonding theories that explain this but for the IB exam and the AP exam um, this is what we're going to do to represent this just how it is even though it's outdated and then how many sigma bonds well they're all sigma bonds so that means we have a total of one two three four five five sigma bonds here All right. So that's pretty much it, how this all works. Um, I Take some good notes, review through these notes. We'll 
go over any questions you have in class over this, show you some more examples, and, and so forth. But this is kind of the idea. All right? So that's it for this lecture.